Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Fountain Pen Resurrection Sunday video. And since this is the last time I'll see you before December 1st, I should let all 10 of you who are watching know that I will be posting a short video every day from December 1st through Christmas Day of each of the 25 inks in the 2022 Dymene Ink Vent Calendar. As you can see, I've already unboxed and filmed 14 of them so far. Something to look forward to. And happy belated Thanksgiving to my American friends. One of the cool things about searching antique shops is finding something you know is interesting, but you're not really sure what you've got until you do some research. Once you discover you have something collectible and then you bring it back from the dead, that is a pen resurrection score. Today's fountain pen resurrection is this 1958 Lady Schaefer Scripsert 12 in gold tool with a gold Schaefer Triumph nib. And this is a double pen resurrection score because I was able to gift it to my wife who adores it. And now she adores me too. Hey, you're in a court, not in the woods, Tarzan. Cut it out. See how I brought this 64 year old pen back to life? Right now. And today's fountain pen resurrection is this 1958 Lady Schaefer Scripsert 12. And what I'd like to do today is look at some of the history of this pen, show some before restoration photos, talk about the restoration process, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. The Lady Schaefer Scripsert line of fountain pens was introduced by Schaefer in 1957, probably as a tongue twister. They used a mini version of the Schaefer Triumph nib, as you can see here on this Schaefer Valiant Snorkel touchdown filler, compared to the Lady Schaefer Scripsert. However, the Scripsert line used Schaefer's new ink cartridges and didn't require the complexity of the snorkel or the touchdown filler. The mini Triumph nibs are made of palladium silver and gold plated. The Lady Schaefer Scripsert line includes dozens of metal finishes and colored section combinations in models given Roman numeral designations from 1 through 35. This one is a model XII or 12 and the finish is called Gold Tool. Tool, T-U-L-L-E, refers to a hexagonal netting material often used in dressmaking. And you can see that netting pattern etched into the gold-filled cap and body of this clipless, cigar-shaped pen. There are hundreds of combinations of patterns and colored plastic sections on these pens as Schaefer really tried to make the ladies' fountain pen a fashion item like jewelry and accessories for women's fashion in the late 50s and early 60s. The Lady Schaefer Scripserts continued until 1964 and like the Schaefer Targa is a very collectible model of fountain pen. Here is what this Lady Schaefer looked like when I found it at a local antique shop. I knew the nib looked like a Triumph but I'd never seen one this small before. And the orange section was intriguing and the pen just screamed 1960s to me. I knew it was designed as a ladies pen and figured if I could get it working again, it would look good on my wife's desk. It came with one empty Schaefer cartridge. The good thing with the Schaefer cartridges is they haven't changed these in decades and modern Schaefer cartridges will work just fine. I removed the nib and straightened the tines as it was fairly sprung and misaligned. Then I polished it with my jeweler's cloth and put the feed and section into my ultrasonic cleaner with nine parts distilled water and one part ammonia with a drop of dish soap to get out all the old ink. Then I polished the body of the pen with some Autosol metal polish liquid, which is just a different brand name for Simichrome. And I polished the plastic section with my Meguiar's Swirl Remover 2 and some elbow grease. So let's look at this pen. Overall, it is a slim metal pen with rounded finials and no clip. The cap and barrel are gold filled metal over a plastic inner tube. The gold filled cladding is brushed horizontally and then engraved with the tool net pattern which gives it a really nice bling when it catches the light. There are no external markings, logos or brands on the pen. 
The cap slips off to reveal a very bright and orangey red section that Schaefer called Mandarin Red and the small Triumph conical nib, sometimes called a wraparound nib. There is a clutch ring that separates the top of the barrel from the section and it does an excellent job of securing the cap so it doesn't spin when it's closed and it has a nice silky feel to it as it's capped and uncapped. The section is long and tapering with the taper continuing through that conical nib. The nib, as I said, is palladium silver with the lower part of the nib gold plated. And there is the ebonite feed. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It has the typical Schaefer upswept tip that is sometimes called a Waverly tip. There are two curved lines which separate the silver tip from the gold plated part of the nib. And those curved lines, along with the taper of the nib, give the nib a heart shaped pattern, which is typical of many other Schaefer nibs over the decades. Then the engraving says Schaefer's. There's a line interrupted by a circle R, which I assume means registered trademark and made in Canada. There are no other markings on the nib and the nib simply unscrews from the end of the section. It's fairly easy to get off. The section unscrews and there is a modern Schaefer cartridge. And here is the antique Schaefer cartridge that came with the pen. And they're identical in size and shape. The inside of the cap shows a white plastic cap liner to seal the nib. The cap posts deeply and securely uh, with the end of the barrel slipping into that cap liner so that the cap doesn't abrade the barrel. It's great when manufacturers actually took care to attend to such details which extend the life of their products. Ah, uh, those were the days. The pen is long enough to write with unposted, but this pen is wonderfully balanced and comfortable in the hand when it's posted and it looks great. It very much reminds me of a slim version of the Waterman Karen Amber. This pen retailed for $12.50 US in 1958, which would be $125 US today. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the 1958 Lady Schaefer Scripsert with a 1967 Parker 45 Insignia, a 1925 Wall Eversharp, a 1976 Schaefer Targa, and a modern Waterman Karen. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And as you can see, these are some really gorgeous nibs. The Lady Schaefer, as I said, is palladium silver. The Parker Wall and the Targa are all 14 karat gold. And the Karen is 18 karat gold. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. They're all very comfortable to write with unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is a 1958 Lady Schaefer Scripsert. And it has a Palladium silver. I'm going to call it an extra fine nib. Well, no, it's a fine. Let's call it a fine nib. It's not marked on the nib, but I would classify it as a fine. Let's check the wetness. You can see it's nicely wet. And now it's relatively smooth with a good deal of feedback which is typical of these conical nibs, especially the smaller ones. And the nib is smooth now because I worked on it extensively to get those tines aligned and to get it smoothed out. It was almost unwritable when I got it, but it's a very nice writer right now. And the ink today is Schaefer's Cartridge Blue. 
And as to line variation, well, there isn't any, and I'm not going to put any pressure on this nib, considering the amount of time I spent getting it unsprung. I don't want to respring it. So a light touch makes this pen a very, very nice writer. And these conical nibs don't have a lot of line variation anyway. They, they all tend to be relatively stiff, at least the ones I've experienced. And this nib makes a 0 0.5 millimeter line, which on my Richard Binder chart says it's a Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing, it's very, very fine and a lot drier and a lot more feedback, but it does do it. And some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. So what are my thoughts on this fountain pen? The nib did take quite a bit of adjusting and correcting for it to write well. But other than that, this pen was in excellent shape and required minimal cleaning and polishing. I paid around $50 US for this pen at the antique shop, which is just around what the pen is worth. But the satisfaction of getting it into writing condition again, especially the fact that it adorns my wife's desk and she loves writing with it, make it a bargain at twice the price. Besides, we both grew up in the 1960s, and this sparkly gold pen with this bright orange section brings back the days of mid-century design. And this pen would fit perfectly with the decor of the HBO series Mad Men, which I really liked. And one could see Don Draper's second wife using one while smoking a Virginia Slim cigarette, because she's come a long way, baby. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. this.